If you haven't seen Peaky Blinders yet, it's a TV show filled to the brim with incredible firearms. Have you ever wondered what guns were featured in the show? The series follows the Shelby family of Birmingham, England, as they navigate life on both sides of the law between the two world wars. Many of the Shelby men and their associates are World War I veterans who are still dealing with the visible and invisible scars of that heinous war. The show covers regional and global politics of the time, including the lit fuse that was the political situations in Ireland, the rise of the Italian Mafia in America, the 1930s global economic crisis, and the rise of fascism. Those of you who have seen the show are aware that it also documents an interesting evolution in the arms carried by the Shelby clan and those around them, as well as the various fire firearms favored during the period. When watching the early seasons of Peaky Blinders, any gun enthusiast will notice the prevalence of World War I surplus arms among Birmingham's gangs and other groups. These guns would have been widely available and affordable after the war, so it stands to reason that low-level gangs like the Peaky Blinders would want them when they first started out. In the early seasons, Tommy and Arthur Shelby were frequently seen carrying Webley pattern revolvers. This should come as no surprise given that the majority of the characters in the show were British veterans of the World War I who were likely familiar with revolvers. Surprisingly, much of the first season is also focused on acquiring a large batch of arms from the Birmingham Small Arms Factory and ensuring that they fall into the right hands or at least not the wrong ones. These collections of guns include surplus arms from the war, but they are far more military grade than a top break revolver tucked in a coat, such as the Enfield No. 1 Mark III rifles and Lewis machine guns. Some rival gangs, including Billy Kimber's group and the Irish Republican Army, are seen carrying Mosser Model 1896 broom handle pistols with some shoulder stocks as well as the yacht P08 or model 1914 Luger. The Lewis machine gun is another example of a gun used early in the show. During World War I, these guns were carried by both British and American troops and were one of the earliest forms of the squad automatic weapon or SAW that most people are familiar with today. The Lewis is easily distinguished by its distinctive barrel jacket, which resembles the large water jackets found on many other machine guns of the time. These guns, on the other hand, were air-cooled, and the jacket served only to protect the cooling components. As the seasons of the show progress, there is a clear increase in the number of guns the gang requires to achieve their objectives, as well as an increase in their means to achieve them. In this way, the show reflects reality. As many of you are aware, during the interwar period, organized crime became inc increasingly prevalent. This is represented in the show by the introductions of even more powerful gangs such as exiled Russian Imperials and the Italian Mafia. The evolutions of firearms technology during the period can also be seen clearly during these seasons, with the more widespread use of semi-automatic handguns. When Tommy Shelby is confronted by the Italian Mafia's Luca Changreta, he is seen carrying what appears to be a cold government model. This would have been the pinnacle of civilian handgun technology at the time. It would not have been inexpensive to acquire. A Colt 1911, on the other hand, is no match for some of the weapons introduced by the Mafia, which was nearing the pinnacle of its power in the United States at the time. With the arrival of these across the pond gangsters comes the introductions of the Thompson submachine gun, emphasizing the deadly serious nature of the situation. They appear to be carrying either the Model 1921 or, more likely, the Model 1928 Thompson. These Thompsons are outfitted with drum magazines, shoulder stocks, the iconic cut-style compensators, and forward pistol grips in the show, providing them with an unprecedented level of handheld firepower. However, the Mafia is not alone in using the submachine gun to gain an advantage in the criminal underworld. In the same gunfight, Tommy Shelby can be seen countering the Thompsons of the Mafia with another Lewis machine guns as well as a rarely seen Bergman MP18, a submachine gun used in limited numbers by the Imperial German Army in the latter years of World War I. Peaky Blinders is a work of fiction, albeit loosely based on fact, but newly released files from the military service pensions collections show that the IRA did, in fact, use Birmingham's gangs to obtain weapons for the War of Independence, according to IRA member John Joseph McGrath. In his pension applications to the Irish state for military service revolutionary years, many of the weapons used in the Easter Rising were stolen from a Birmingham arms factory. To the Rising, he purchased weapons from a source at the city's Midlands Arms Factory and shipped them to Ireland via travelers traveling from London to Dublin. McGrath escorted 150 kilos of weapons, mostly small arms and ammunition, to Dublin on Good Friday 1916, the day the yacht was sunk 
with 20,000 guns aimed at the rebels. They were employed by the GPO. When McGrath was arrested in early 1919, the London-born brothers Dennis and Joseph Carr, sons of a successful road contractor from Co. Tipperary, took over the arms purchasing operations. The Carr brothers began by obtaining small amounts of weapons from ex-servicemen, but not enough to meet Ireland's demand for weapons. Then, with funding from the IRA in Dublin, they expanded their reach into the underworlds of London and Birmingham. The Shelby's main rivals in Peaky Blinders are Italian and Jewish gangs. The cars obtained guns from the Birmingham mob, traveling to the city on a regular basis, which was then the center of Britain's munition industry. The cars also went after the Titanic gang of Hoxton, East London, who were involved in drug smuggling and illegal bookmaking, as well as the Sabinis of Clerkenwell, an Italian gang. Dennis Carr was able to make contact with a major arms dealer on Hackney Road and purchase an unlimited supply of ammunition and guns, ranging from revolvers to machine guns as a result of these. Several other pensions applicants from the 1930s and 1940s mentioned British arms procurement activity. Patrick Maher stated that he purchased arms in London from Russians. Dennis Kelleher stated that he purchased arms from Jewish arms dealers in the Whitechapel area. And Eowyn O'Grady stated that he purchased arms from Jews and Arabs in the East End. Billy Ahern, a Cork native sent to London by the IRA, obtained weapons from two dealers, Fingers and a gunsmith on Hackney Road, who sold us any amount of stuff, web lease and 303 and 45 ammunition. Sean Cleary obtained guns from the IRA in Kerry from Harry Friday, a dwarf little fellow, a cripple from Walworth, South London. The IRA set up seven dumps across London. The base of operations was a house in Tottenham, owned by Irish woman Agnes Brown and her husband Robert. Brown made dozens of trips to the London docks, carrying revolvers in shopping bags layered with vegetables. When her husband was transferred to work in Belfast in 1921, their home contained so much weaponry that it required a horse-drawn car to transport it to the docks. The Carr brothers used a picture frame shop in London's Docklands as a front for dumping and collecting weapons. Four BNI vessels sailing between London and Dublin were armed. Friendly stevedores loaded the guns into crates, and sailors on board were sworn in as IRA members by Rev. Jack O'Gorman and Oblatus Priest. One shipment included 50,000, one shipment included 50 Trio Tree Lee Enfield rifles, as well as three sacks of small arms and ammunition. The Carr brothers were so successful that IRA members traveled from Ireland to purchase firearms from the same sources. They were sent back home, while my men and I were able to pass as Englishmen and were not suspected. The men sent across were naturally marked down as Irishmen, Dennis Carr recalled. The cars were sent to Germany in May 1922 with 1,500 pounds to purchase weapons. In a foreshadowing of the arms crisis that occurred nearly a half century later, the cars purchased weaponry that was to be sent to the north to defend nationalist communities. Pat O'Sullivan used his status as a London-born, wounded British Army veteran to simply take weapons from a decommissioned RAF barracks in Uxbridge, West London. His brother Joe as well as Reggie Dune, the IRA's officer commanding in London, were both wounded veterans. We all were able to wear in our coats the wounded badge awarded by the British Army and could mix freely without being suspect. Pat Recall It was simple to steal the weapons, which included revolvers and up to 100 rifles. It took some ingenuity to get them to Ireland, and he and three others pretended to be a golfing party on vacation. They packed the weapons into 10 golf bags and wrapped them in travel rugs. Joe O'Sullivan and Reggie Dune were hanged in June 19, 2022 for the assassinations of Field Marshal Sir Henry Wilson. And that's all for today's video. Were you aware of the weapons featured in the show? Please share your thoughts on this video in the comments below. Want to know more things about the Peaky Blinders or Thomas Shelby? Please subscribe to our channel for more such exciting content and the latest update. See you in the next one.